Yeah. Anyway, William Byron's car, not for me. Not Alex for you. Bowman's Nashville car is that's for, for me. I like. I know, it. like, like it, 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 like it. Technically, like it's just a lot of it's just a lot of noise. Triangles. But I think it looks cool. I and Dale Jr. Awesome designed it. Look... So. Wait. What? Yeah. Really? Yep. Really? They had a contest. Dale Jr. designed that one, and Jeff Gordon did the other one. I'm pretty sure. Wait, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, dude. And it's the Ally yeah. 400 at Nashville this weekend. I didn't know Dale Jr. did that. Shout out Dale Jr. Dude, always... I love that car. I'm going to look at it again. It's so nice. Like, it's so cool looking. It is. <clears throat> I think the, little... the only thing is, I think the roof number being white would be an upgrade to the I that dark definitely... teal on purple. I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that. That weird teal does not seem to go as well as, as a white would. But regardless, like, I don't know, man. Sometimes you need busy cars. This is a cool occasion. NASCAR going back to Nashville. I think I think that works out well. It looks sick. Well, it's oh, for the next three years, too. After 22, 3 and 24, I think this deal is through. Um, for anyone that thinks the fairgrounds is going to magically be on the schedule next year, they are sorely mistaken. Sad, but understandable. That's okay. I think I think racing forty minutes outside of town is thing in the world. No, until no, you can figure out the fairgrounds. Nashville is a cool town. Nashville will be enough of a draw track withstanding. True, true, true. You ready to get this show on the road? That said, we should get this show on the road. That said. Welcome to this week's edition of the Fake Racers Podcast, folks. We got a jam-packed episode in store for you. Um, all of centered around identity crisis. So Davey and I, we talked a lot about a lot of different things. There's a long Joe ramble in here, too. So just brace yourselves for that, because I'm pretty sure and Davey, you know, made sure to let me know, but even during the, our recording, but I definitely contradicted myself because I don't know what to think anymore, just like a lot of you folks at home. And, well, that's okay because that's what, uh, it's just, it's just the world we live in at this point. But without further ado, throwing it back to our past selves, this is the Fake Racers Podcast Identity Crisis. He's Davy Hazard. Me, Davy Hazard. He's Joe Tawanski. Thank you. Thought that would be a you very, never, you never do very that. obvious you, when never, I pointed at you. That, never that, that was your cue. But that's okay. That's okay. We're having fun here. That never happens. This, of course, is the Fake Racers podcast here on JTN on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever this thing gets distributed because I'm a more set it and forget it guy when it comes to the podcast streaming platforms. Yeah. But um, I would like like to add that our show she says intro and make it snappy, and that was the longest intro we've ever had. Well, that's okay. You know, it, it's it's a long episode because we're gonna be talking about all the racing from this past weekend, and then we're gonna be talking about all the racing this weekend because there is a lot of it. And this is why the summer is so, so good until we get to the end of August when, you know, the Olympics are on and NBC was like, no, we don't want to broadcast racing at all for two weeks. Anyways, pain, pain, pain and suffering, because SRX will be over by then, too. Sad, big sad. <laughs> Watch your local stuff. But uh, yeah, let's 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 get on to it. The for the NTT data IndyCar series. I almost said the Verizon IndyCar series. Fun fact, Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. I'll be there in August, but um IndyCar Detroit Grand Prix. I always call it Duel in the D. It's not because that's the hockey game played between Michigan and Michigan State. I don't know why mm -hmm. I get those two confused. Probably because I attend both of them. Anyways, um Day one. Day one was definitely the more eventful day of the two, wouldn't you agree? Wow. Yeah, day one had a lot. Um Yeah. Really no shortage of um drama. Things to talk about and <laughs> problems and incidents and anger. Yes. A lot of anger. So, <laughs> you know, race kicked off well enough. I think uh, it was that race. I, I was watching that race more than I was watching the Xfinity race and the truck race. Pardon mm. me. We're just having all kinds of issues at the start of this one with our voice boxes. We're we're just we're just destroyed right now. <laughs> it is late. Um, <laughs> obviously, race started off with a bang. Um, Want to make sure we send thoughts, prayers, Felix Rosenquist. I know he was released from the DMC, which is a very good hospital in downtown Detroit. But um, 
was released. He's okay. I think he's he should be back in the car this weekend, I'm assuming. Um, I haven't seen it otherwise, but I haven't seen confirmation of it. Um, but obviously a very scary crash. Um, and then we had about an hour and 40 minute repair. So that kind of slowed the race down yeah. just a little bit. Yeah, that was really scary. Uh, throttle hung. Uh, not even necessarily a particularly fast corner, but just mm -hmm. a bad angle, hit the tires wrong, um, went scaled straight them. up, scaled them, scaled the fence, knocked the walls down. That's the scary just a, part. Just just scary. Just just a very violent accident. Um, I imagine since he's released, he's probably pretty banged up, but mostly okay. He's probably pretty bruised up. Um, I've been there. <laughs> 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 it's not fun, but... You are you. He's okay. You're glad to be okay. We're glad he's okay. Um, yeah, but it was pretty violent. It it wasn't. It was kind of looking a little sketch for a little bit there, but everything kind of seemed on the up and up once they got him out and they got him transferred. So yep. And they um another promising sign too was they didn't like transfer him right to the hospital. They took him to the infield care center that they had <clears throat> set up. Um, just to make yeah. sure that he was okay, like to be transported, which is always a good sign when they're not rushing a guy to the hospital. Um, so that, of course, was great to see. Glad to hear that he's okay. Um, mm. Chevy and the team confirmed that it wasn't like something that would come up again. It wasn't like something that was like software related. It was just kind of a parts failure. Um, which I always ask, okay, what, you know, I don't think they said what part it was. And you always think like, okay, is it maybe because we're doing something with this part or is it just, you know, something mm. completely random? I'm assuming it's something completely random. It got fixed, replaced. Um, how many people do you think are tuned in just for the guy behind me? At least a couple. Yeah, I, can't I know say, I am. I can't say his name. Because he'll, because uh, he'll, uh, you know, oh, yeah. understood. understood. Well, he needs, that he makes needs sense. Disease. But um, and then also just kind of tacking on to that, the next day they put Oliver Askew into the car who drove for them obviously last year in that car, right? Mm. Is that correct? Um, and they I... they had him retire early on day two with the motor issue. So I have a feeling they thought, you know, hey, let's not risk it again. Yeah. But then they won the day two. But still, day one, um, we also had a late caution. Um, Very controversial decision-making by the officials at the end of this one. You know, instead of running the race out under caution because was they needed repairs to the barriers, I'm assuming, was, I'm, if I'm recalling correctly, um, there's a lot of stuff spewn. Spewed, strewn. strewn. Strewn, sure. I don't care. Um, you got it. I, I'm here. I'm still living. I'm still breathing. Um, so they red flag the race. They bring the field down. Um, the controversy isn't necessarily that they red flagged the race. It's more with the procedure. And that procedure is, and I'll, I'll fill you in. Um, crews aren't allowed to go to the cars with anything until every single car is on pit lane stopped. Will Power uh -huh. got there three minutes before the last car got there to pit road, it felt like. Mm hmm um, because he was a leader. So, you know, they they talked about him yelling for a fan on the radio, and they made it sound, you know, the broadcast was like, oh, because he's hot. It was a hot day on Saturday. Trust me, it was very hot up here. Um, Power, though, post-race interview, was very angry at the officials. Uh, it was a great clip, a very memeable clip. I feel like classic Will Power, which makes me... Um, I, it's like Kyle Bush. I didn't appreciate him when I was younger and I appreciate it now, you know, mm -hmm. felt the same way about willpower, but the issue was the, um, ECU got fried sitting there in the sun yep. with the hot car. And that's something that happens when you're sitting there with a hot car in the hot sun, not but, getting uh, air to it, waiting for last in line to roll up to pit road, <laughs> put a fan on it. But, um, how frustrating with like race officials. I'm sure you have stories, but race officials oh. kind of being um, a little incompetent with do understanding some, to change the rules. Do I have some roles. stories? Yeah. Um, it makes you want to rip their head off because, you know, by you've probably been here's Here's the thing about something like this is you've probably been in scenarios where 
you were the guy that was getting a different type of treatment or you were the guy that was, you know, you 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 have been in every scenario possible mm. with race officials. So when something happens that feels like it's out of procedure, it feels immensely unfair because you've probably had a situation before that went differently. And now it's different again. And it's like, well, this this one's screwing me. Why isn't it the same as before? So um, willpower, you know, <laughs> definitely justified in his anger. I definitely understand why he was so angry. Um, God, I, I really, I mean, he, I mean, the race was taken away from him mm-hmm. at the end of the day. That was his race and it was taken away from him. And it made it, for, like you said, a great clip. But it will, it will, the opportunity to win the race because you know Erickson would have had a chance still, and obviously Marcus Erickson, congratulations, win number one. Um, that made Very it seven cool. for seven on winners this year. We'll, we'll talk about again. We'll talk about race two in a second, but um, it, it, it's so frustrating. And he said it in his interview. I didn't deserve this. I worked my mm-hmm. tail off. Didn't say yeah. tail. Um, I didn't deserve this, and I think that's. That's something that's so relatable, too. You know what I mean? Because I think everyone's had a moment like that, whether it be taking a test in school, whether it be the way like a a, a loved one or a partner treats you after a certain event. What You know, I think everyone's had that moment. And in that moment, you're it's so relatable to that race car driver, even though it's polar opposite, you know, on the spectrum yeah, of yeah. thing that could happen. And I think it goes back and we've talked about emotions. In racing, we talked about it with the way they, they NBC did a great job with letting the end Elio's celebration at the 500 breathe, just letting it breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you know, showing stuff like that, doing those interviews, uh, and making sure that they're getting posted out on social media, which is the big thing because that's where I saw it. I didn't watch the end of the so I was, I was angry for Will because that mm-hmm. that blew, but. Um, that's why it's important to post stuff like that to make sure you grab that content as a as a pretty as a media provider, um, and as a series because it makes good content. Now, not saying that you know the IndyCar stewards should uh, purposely do stuff like that to get clips like that and get a rise out of their drivers, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, messages mixed mixed signals. Paddle Award though wins race numero dos. See what I did there? Um, yeah, <laughs> I did. First multi-time winner, 2021, took over the points lead. However, again, this was another race that it was a Team Penske driver's one to lose with Joseph Newgarden dominating dominating the race. I think he led all but three or four, those last three or four laps. Yeah. Um, what a, I, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't call it a disaster start for Penske considering they were in positions to win this weekend, but... For all intents and purposes, what a bad start for Team Penske and IndyCar. I haven't won a race this season yet. I think that's their longest stretch since, what was it? Like, it was like the early 2000s, mid 2000s, or something like that. Cart days, I don't know. I don't remember. I'm not big on IndyCar history. I don't remember all of it. But, um, yeah, Penske. Take over the series and suddenly you can't win a race. Hey, but that shows that he's at least not giving his cars an advantage. He um, definitely isn't. <laughs> if he is, he's doing a bad job. That's oh good, my though. Goodness. That's what we like. Yeah, yeah but for um, sure. yeah. So Newgarden, where they went wrong, and I don't think it was necessarily that they went wrong. Uh, that late caution kind of got them because they were out on the reds at the end, and the reds all weekend were just terrible. They got sh- Bell Isle is the, it's Michigan, so anytime you're on any type of track except the michigan international speedway for some freaking reason um but i don't know how that track hasn't weathered in with the way the winters have been here the last eight years or whatever it's been um but bell isle of course it's a state park is what it is so there's a lot of traffic foot traffic all around the park a lot of cars driving heavy cars driving on the course that so kind of mm-hmm. it gives you all those bumps so uh, that, that's what makes street courses in general really entertaining. And, you know, it was a good, another great weekend on Belle Isle, and I'm really happy they got back, and I wish I could have gone, but um, it was expensive still, so I didn't want to because money. Which I think yeah. is... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. You go first. I was going to say, I think that's another issue that some of these motorsports have. Like, it was $85 to sit in those grandstands on the front stretch. Um, and then it was forty five dollars for general admission, and you had to bring your own lawn chair to sit in. Right. 
So I feel like there's a little disconnect there. Um, I look at IMS, and general admission for IMS is $35. Jeez. Um, I feel like that's yeah. more of a fair price than 45 because $10 is a lot of money. Um, but I also think it was kind of trying to recoup losses from last year and also not, you know, originally not because state of Michigan very late changed. Oh, full capacity for outdoor sporting events. Um, that, that went into effect June 1st. So they kind of scrambling there. Right. Mm. But, um, you know, it was still a pretty good turnout from what I heard. And the viewership was awesome, was up. It was about, yeah. it was over a million, I think, which was really good. Now it was on NBC both days. Um, it was around some of the Olympic stuff and uh, the something tennis. I I don't know. Um, the start got wasn't on TV for both races both days, so that kind of blew. But uh, it wasn't on NBC, so folks that don't you know didn't have CNBC or NBCSN or whatever network didn't get to see it, but. Um, at least they had extra post race at the end on on Sunday, which was really good. They had like thirty minutes of post race, but um, I don't know. I guess that's it because you you seem like you're you're kind of done with this one. <laughs> I'm not done. I just I like I I can only watch so much racing throughout the weekend. All the yeah. crap that I got to do. Yeah. And uh, like Indy, like I paid attention to IndyCar. I, I know the I know the ins and outs of what happened this weekend, but I really can't go any more in depth than what you go into. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, like, I don't want to just regurgitate what you said. So we're not going to dive down the cave, but a, a great weekend. And again, IndyCar back this weekend on Sunday noon, NBCSN right before the cup series race from road America. So it's going to be another great weekend of racing. I'm going to try to watch as all of that because it's there Sunday road America Sit down noon. Get a pizza. I don't know. Get a pizza. Get something in the oven. Bada bing, bada boom. You just sit there the rest of the day. So, something in the oven. Go, go watch. Know? Go watch with your father because it's also Father's Day. Ah, so, I haven't watched any car with him yet since he's been big in any car. So there you go. Perfect Could excuse. Probably... Yeah, I gotta. Look at me bringing families together. You know that's a that's a pretty all star idea of you, Joe. It was a pretty all-star, because, hey, now, you're an all-star, Davey. Just like Kyle Larson, as he won 2021's edition of the NASCAR All-Star Race. Um, okay. It certainly was one. So, there's a lot of things to unpack here. And I have them bulleted out. Um, I, I wrote Kyle Larson, unsurprisingly, wins. I am not having fun. I don't have fun when I watch the same guy win three weeks in a row. But I think that's a lot of people. That's okay. Davey got Davey got to see his guy win like five weeks in a row or some stupid stuff. Look at that. Look at what a what a loser. Hey, you tell me how good Jimmy's doing in IndyCar now, okay, bub? But <laughs> that Career triggers him. Car oval that's, all, that's all you have to do is tell tell Davey that Jimmy Johnson's washed in IndyCar on Twitter at Davey Hazard. Friendly reminder that if you call Jimmy Johnson washed in IndyCar and that he shouldn't be there and that he needs to leave, that that's insulting to IndyCar and IndyCar drivers because expecting a stock, a 20 year career stock car oval driver to be good at IndyCar is insulting to the talent IndyCar drivers have and how hard those cars are to drive. Thank you. Um, but we, we talked last night getting back on topic. Uh, Ignorant. I, th the format was very controversial and we had, we had a lot a good conversation last night. We didn't record it because it was a little more laid back than we have than we can be here. Had it with a friend of the show, Tommy Bordeaux. We did, but he's never really good for actually having conversations. He likes to just say his point and then not listen to you make your point. But I digress. <laughs> I digress. He won't watch this. Podcast. He won't we watch on, this. We need, him, we need him on the podcast one time. Um, and not for the chase one because I swear God. if he's on here for the chase discussion, I'm done with it. I'm not going to do done. it. Um, you can have it alone. I thought the format worked though. I know, I know this is where we kind of um, divert from each other because in the end of the day, the all-star race is supposed to be a fun race. And I mm -hmm. think the, the biggest problem with it is NASCAR has now conditioned its fans to think, hey, we're doing something in the all-star race. That means we're thinking about doing it in actual points paying events. You know, you look at last year, choose rule and the number placement and the underglow, I think, was just a fun little touch. Um, you look at the year before, you know, the, all the different packages we've used during the All Star race. Mm -hmm. um, one year we had the two different tire compounds, which went horribly. Which, by the way, I think could have went well, but that's another discussion. I, if it was a day race, it would have went great. It was at night. Or different compounds. <laughs> well, you know, and, and neither here nor there. Um, I thought 
It was fun. The format was fun. Right. And, and I think if you went somewhere else, it probably would have been better because Texas is just not the track for it. But I know you got a big point here. Um, Do I have a big point? You didn't have fun, is, is what no, you said. I didn't have fun, but I think... Like I, I kind of, and I said this yesterday. I said this yesterday. Is like I kind of started to lean over the course of Sunday night. I started to lean like, eh, the format is the least annoying part of this. Like, yep, there's, it's really not that big of a deal. It's the All Star race. I'm going to turn my brain off for it anyway, and it's for fun. It's, an, it's, it's an exhibition. If we want to put the bad cars up front to make the rate, or <laughs> you know, do it. Try to make the racing better, then let's try and do it. Screw it. Why not? We're let's okay do with doing stuff. it at our local short tracks that we seem to love so much, even though they're dying. I'm just saying. No, it, I'm, you, you, yeah. He's, Joe's making the whole thing. I'm just saying. People don't that know what they want, is my. <laughs> the, format, the format was honestly not that bad for an All Star Race format. I thought the point stuff was a little silly and it was a little wow, woohoo. Points. Yeah. Okay, we don't know what's really going on, but there's points. Yeah, and it was like, eh, okay, whatever. That's kind of lame, but whatever. It's happening. Like, really, it, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think that's what a lot of people are particularly upset about. I think a lot of people were upset about it when they heard about it. But at the end of the day, I feel like people were more concerned about the on-track racing, mm -hmm. which I, I, I was. That that's how I work. So that's yeah. how I'm guessing people saw it it maybe was a boring race upset. maybe some people are still upset about the format but if they are it's a little silly um and yeah it was a boring race i at one no amount of, no amount of restarts is going to make that exciting um and yeah the restarts were exciting but you have bad cars that are at the front of the field now because of the invert which is what it is the all-star race but that's helping keep the cars closer together the cars are literally choked to death, so they can't actually get for, far apart from one another. Um, there's a whole load of dirty air that comes off the back of the Gen 6 cars, no matter what you do to them. And so it's impossible to follow, but you can't really go anywhere else because the PJ1 was laid down, so there was one groove because it's Texas. And really, you just had factors from every direction making this just absolutely dreadful to watch, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. In the end, it did good viewership, though, which I know that's no consolation to someone that thinks, not you, before I say this, but to someone that thinks they know exactly what NASCAR needs to do to fix their product. And again, I'm just, my big issue is I am just so, 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 and it's not an issue with, you know, you can complain about stuff you like, and that's fine, but it feels like at this point we're just beating a dead horse and we're just saying the same thing every week, week in and week out, because it's the hip thing, it's the cool thing to do. It's the cool thing to rag on NASCAR nowadays. It's cool to say, oh, NASCAR doesn't, you know, NASCAR doesn't know what they want. Which is a fair point, because, you know, again, complete leadership change three years ago. Right after the stages were implemented, complete leadership change at the top. You have the RTA pulling them in one direction. You have um, Speedway Motorsports and I and what was ISC, which is now part of NASCAR, pulling and all the tracks pulling them in another direction. You have a drivers' council that apparently you don't listen to, but you have them trying to pull you in another direction. You have manufacturers that want one thing, and then to another Toyota wants the complete opposite of what Chevy and Ford want with the new car. You just have all these things, and NASCAR is always put in the middle as a sanctioning body. To their own fault, of course. Like, they've put themselves in this situation. But they got themselves here because they were listen to, listening to everybody. So now, when you go, when, you know, five years ago, you were complaining about how the racing was. And you say, well, I liked it two years ago. Well, you know, no, you, you, sure, maybe you did. But it wasn't enough for just you to like it to move that needle. Where the needles kind of moved, not great, but they've seen movement. And what what it, are sports in general, especially in the United States, because this is a very American thing. They are entertainment. Yes. And you can say that NASCAR, you want them to take themselves serious as a motorsport. I 
100% agree. As someone that wants to work in it, as someone that loves, you know, working on things, mechanical, machine, whatever. Um, words are hard tonight. I want that too. But what I'm trying to tell you, when you, when you see, when I see next gen, and I see it as something that's so specked out, Compared to what we've had to date. Compared to the other series. Compared to Xfinity and Truck. You know, if you want to... Oh, Xfinity, uh, composite bodies, everyone... That has nothing on this next-gen car. Every single car is going to be the exact same. So if we're going to keep saying that NASCAR doesn't know what direction they're going in. And we're going to point at the all-star races that... Oh, they're just going to throw cautions every 15 laps. If that's what you want to say, then I think you already understand where they're going. You think they're going entertainment. I don't... Th it's okay to say that they don't know where they're going. But if you on the outside can figure out where they're going, then good on you. Figure out if this is something you want to continue to follow. If it's not, that's okay. If it is, that's great. Because in the end... You have other options, right? You have things like IndyCar F1, which F1, in my opinion, that is... IndyCar is the purest form of racing that we have um, widely viewable in the United States. Mm -hmm. Because I think F1 is just so technologically advanced compared. You know what I mean? I think the technology comes a lot into play. That's why you see Mercedes, Red Bull, you know, always at the front of the grid. But when I look at, like, and I have to open up Twitter and I have to see 20 people say, oh, just get rid of stage racing. That'll fix it. Oh, just get rid of the playoffs. That'll fix it. Oh, just, you know, be more transparent. That'll fix it. It won't. It just won't. You're, you, you've gotten to a point where the sport the sanctioning body, is so unrecognizable to people. So instead of saying that it can go back to what it was, start thinking about what it can do in the future. Stop trying to draw comparisons to the 90s, the early 2000s. And try to think about what it can do to be better now. What it can do, you know, what it can do. And what it can't do. Because you also have to realize there's more at play than just NASCAR being like, okay, we're the dictator of how things go. Because again, they have put themselves in that box. I know that was a lot. I probably contradicted myself a bunch there. But, a little bit. I mean, you, you pointed out, but I'm just... I, I think it just shows I'm flustered at this point. I think is what it, <laughs> it's, it's the way to put it. Because I just... I, it's okay to want what you want. And it's okay if you want to use your platform to complain about things. That is perfectly fine. But you also have to be able to look in the mirror and realize, is this something that is that you can accomplish? And that's with anything in life. And it's not about, will you ever accomplish it? It's about, can I accomplish it in doing it this way? Can I accomplish it at this point? You know what I mean? It's not like... I'm going to I'm going to wake up one day. Oh, can I go lift a thousand pounds? Nope. OK, I guess I'm never going to be able to do it. I don't know. I'm going on too many tangents and you haven't stopped me. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm saying <laughs> decent stuff because you haven't stopped me here. But I also know I'm kind of going all over the place. No, and I'm going to I don't really know where to go with kind of what you were saying. I don't I don't really know where to go with that because there I don't there's no answer, right? It's it's always going to be opinion. Even everything you said was just an opinion for to be honest, like there's never going to be an answer and you know, I'm of the opinion that I feel like NASCAR can do better than what we saw on Sunday. I'm of the opinion that NASCAR can do better than the NA18D package. We can do better than this. We can do better than the cars that we have currently. And Watching what I watched on Sunday, I don't, I, I don't have any reservations or anything weird about it because it is what it is, and it's the All Star race. It's not gonna be that sort of thing. Excuse me. Going forward, I think it was just screw it. Why not give it a show? Give it a shot. Eddie Gossage is gonna <laughs> send himself into the stratosphere after the race anyway, so it doesn't matter. And so, um. <sighs> 
it's just tough. It's I mean, frustrating. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak from the people who are the ones who are begging and pleading for NASCAR to do X thing, do Y thing, the things that you don't want to – like the things that you're kind of tired of seeing is like you know, they love the sport too, and they, mm-hmm. they want to see it be what they think is its best self. It, you, you know, it, them being annoying about it, <laughs> you know, Tommy mentioning 2003, anytime you mention anything good ever – is um <laughs> like you know it, it it can be annoying and it is annoying but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's particularly he's wrong. wrong no, no I, it's now not, I think yeah. he's wrong now i think he's wrong i think mm. he's definitely wrong i think we can I, I think there are steps that have been taken up to this point today with nascar's decision making that are totally okay um obviously haha bias jimmy johnson fan i didn't hate the chase it was a way to keep this keep the fans interested late into the season uh is it the most straightforward yes that's the way to do it he is the champion is that is it the most legitimate way to crown champion blah 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 i mean maybe not probably not more than likely not but every single sport in america has a playoff Hmm. that is more bs than the nascar chase ever was ever 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 Every single every single stick and ball sport playoff is more BS random luck nonsense than the NASCAR chase ever was. By the way, let me just tell you that right now. Oh really? Um, absolutely, one million percent in every single way. Um. So, like, there there are steps, and and then we get to the cars, we get to the racing. Um, I can't stand. Um, I, I can't stand high downforce racing with stock cars. I think it doesn't make sense. Are we going to always have air and aero dependence? Yes, because we're going very fast. That is how it works. But I can I can ask for the cars to not be like the Gen 6 cars. Whatever they're doing in the air, whatever they're throwing behind them, I can want that to change. And I want that to change. It'd be nice to have cars that look nice like the Gen 6s not suck racing in traffic. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I want a little bit of horsepower back in the cars. It'd be pretty cool. I really liked watching Darlington this year. Darlington wasn't particularly a good race, quote unquote race, but it was fun for me to watch. I enjoyed watching the cars on the edge of control. And before you say anything, Joe, I enjoyed watching the cars on the edge of control and, you know, not Being tail in the wind. It, like, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Like, like I, I liked that there was it's a different kind of it's a different kind of not able to control the race car i mean we talked about this yesterday and it's it's really prevalent in a lot of um a lot of avenues in sim racing now where you can edit the tracks that are a little more gripped up a la nr 2003 the flagship simulator that is broadcast on gtn um a lot of the time when you run a gripped up track on an r2003 it's no different than with the high downforce pj1 high grip stock cars you gotta run them free you have to run them free because it's the only way you're going to unbind the race car and so when they do go they go quick that's not fun that's not fun that's not what i like to see i want to see i want to see a gradual line where we start to see that grip go away not the line that we see at tracks like that, where what we saw on Sunday night, where it's a line, then it drops off when you yep. hit that point, when you hit that threshold. You know, I think, I think a lot of people probably agree with what I'm saying, mm-hmm. but they say it in a way, and I, we talked about this last night too. But they say it in a way where it's like they don't necessarily know what they're looking at, yep. right? They don't, they can't spot and name and vocalize, and they can't figure it out. They don't put it together that. They need to. They don't know. Hmm, I'm I'm flummoxing myself. Mm-hmm. I had a point. You know my point. They, regardless, they're you know saying, what I'm saying stuff and they don't know exactly what they're saying. Yeah, a lot of I the time, the a point. lot of people, especially on NASCAR Twitter, we see that often. Where I mean, I, it just, I, it, I think. Good, 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 good. To me, when people say stuff like that, it feels like they're artificial. They're doing it for. Cl- you know what I mean? And I think that's where my root issue is. It's not with what they're saying. It's why they're saying it. it's causation, not the um, not the actual what they're saying. And I think that's that's probably more of a better sum up of what I was trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's more, you know. Is that and I'm sure, you know, there's good intentions and they always say the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Mm hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, stages were implemented as a fix to fans being angry that a guy like Martin Truex Jr. that was so good in 2016 didn't make it to the final four because NASCAR wasn't willing to compromise on a playoff format that they thought added value to the sport. You know, they they weren't going to go back to the older chase, or they weren't going to go back to a full seat format. Um, and th- and that's th- I think that's my point is that we're going to ask for something, and then if it doesn't work, we're going to right away we're just going to blame it on NASCAR. We're just going to blame it on the sport. And in the end of the day, yes, they have all the decision making power. In the end, right? Mm-hmm. But we need to be conscious about what we're saying. And that's why the big point of what you what you said of having to understand what you're actually saying mm-hmm. and what you actually want, not just saying, you know, the oh, big, big motor, small blade. You know, that yeah. was like, I get that. That's great. Guess what? These cards produce an ungodly amount of side for. It. And you're never going to change that with a spoiler. Nope. No spoiler in the world will change the side can't, force that the car makes. Can't change it with the radiator pan. Can't change it with the splitter overhang. You can't like that's that's just the way the cars are designed. Like it, it goes back to what I said yesterday, and I feel like this was a really good description. <laughs> it's a lot of people who can't see the forest with the trees. Yep. You know, a lot of people focusing this, this, this. When really, if you took a step back, you would kind of be able to visualize and see what you're actually looking at and come up with what you want. And you'll be able to see those problems and, and name those problems, like the side force. Like, that's why the cars could get, I mean, yeah, okay, the spoiler probably helps. But the reason they could save, everyone saves the cars is because of the side force. That's why the cars are on rails. Yep. At least that's, most of the reason. That's why you see them have, <clears throat> you see them doing all that dump the air on the back, on the spoiler of the other guy. Like, because they can. Because yep. they can get really close like that. Like, it's just... It, it's you gotta you gotta understand what you're asking for, and if you do, that's great. And I'm sure mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that are gonna say they do, and power to you. But you have to also figure out, okay, if I say this and say, you know, I see a lot of people. Oh, if you were in charge of NASCAR, what would? You know, that's that's another one I've seen a lot in the last year and yeah. a half. Like, you know, all these people. Oh, I'd get rid of the chase, or I'd get rid of the playoffs, or I'd get rid of stages. I'd get rid. Make the rules all 2003. Tommy. Tommy get, Tommy's getting a lot of crap here, but... He is, but... Um, and this and this type of, type of discussion, I think it's not deserved, but... Yeah. It's really it's really exactly what we're talking about when it's when it's just like... It's there's this... absolutely... You, you know, the argument, and we're, I'm not, I'm not going to try and poop on that. I love Tommy. He's my best friend in the world. But, like, you know, Tommy will try and say that there's absolutely nothing wrong with 2003 NASCAR. And I can think of a lot of things wrong with 2003 NASCAR. The fact that it, you know, was – I don't care what you say about the chase and its, its role it had on the years where NASCAR fell off, but 2003 was the start of it, or at least near the start. Can't say it's not because it's right there. Anyway. it's. It's a mess. You got to figure out what you're asking for. You got to figure out what you're asking for and if you actually want. Because, you know, we can blame NASCAR for this. They tried. They tried to get the teams to, you know, cut back on into 2020. Tried to. They tried to say, okay, let's get rid of the spoiler. And the teams were like, no, we we don't want to because we're only going to use this car for another year. And then we had the pandemic, and no one saw that coming. So that's why we're using this again. It's like eating your vegetables, right? You eat your vegetables before you get dessert. Hopefully, the next gen is a good dessert. That's a really good one. You should clip that and put that on Twitter, man. Probably will. But, you yeah. know, here we are. It's just, it, I'm just, man, complaining. I'm complaining about people complaining. <laughs> but that's it's just, it's it's, frust- it's frustrating, I think, is, is the best way. Because there's so many people that want the same thing, and then it's not getting changed for it. Mm-hmm. That's frustrating for those people, and that's frustrating for people that are like, yeah, whatever. Which I think I'm kind of in the camp of. Like, I could care less. I'm still going to watch no matter what. You know, this has been my coping mechanism for checks, <laughs> checks watch 21 years now. So, <laughs> like, I'm still going to watch it. But I understand. I understand the arguments and I get them. I watched stray kittens play in the backyard at my dad's during the third round. So that was kind of fun. I was really mad in the final round when Brad didn't clear himself because that was the end of the race. I know. I was. I. I yelled, and I haven't yelled 
because exactly knew exactly that's what I was like god bless it like as he was clear but of course he's not Joey Logano so he didn't clear himself moving on yeah. moving on a, a night that I think a lot of people loved <clears throat> and um it had the same goal in the end as the all-star race I'm gonna kind of Davey I, just a little note I'm gonna kind of Urge our two things in here since we're we're going for a long time. Really hampering on this SRX is is the All Star Race thing because they're both they're both supposed to be for fun, right? Mm -hmm. Like I got I got murdered when we went into that chat and I said, "Well, the SRX, I wish they would take themselves more seriously," or something along those. Lines. Maybe, maybe it wasn't probably exactly that, but um, it was something. Along those lines, I'm sure is how it got interpreted after I got talked to after. But and then I was I heard, well, it's supposed to be for fun. It's supposed to be for fun. And it was fun. Mm -hmm. But 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 some of the promotional material for it, it feels like they're really they're trying to be serious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's the same thing with NASCAR. It's the same thing with a lot of things. There's mixed messaging. But SRX kicked off this weekend at Stafford. Um, Doug Kobe won. Good one for the short trackers. Oh man, so cool! I don't know if you listen to Door Over Clear anymore. I did. And I usually don't, but I did with with the Kobe coming on, and uh, apparently that was a really special win for him. Uh, you can go check it out if you want to figure out why. I'm not gonna delve into it, but <laughs> happy for Doug Kobe. Yep, it was great. Um, it was a great night. I I was really happy they did the whole thing with Biffle's car getting destroyed, and they brought out one of the backups. Which that was yeah. that was probably my first cue that okay maybe this is just for fun maybe I should have picked that up maybe that's on me <laughs> probably is but um but it was a great night you know they had the the they they called it the fun caution but I think it was actually I think Marco I saw some things that said Marco Andretti was stuck in third they didn't want him running around in third if he couldn't get into fourth yeah yeah um that's why the caution got thrown so if that was it that was it um. I didn't think we needed the first heat just because I thought the whole point of the two heats was to get points to line you up for the main, mm -hmm. but I misinterpreted that too. It's kind of hard to find all the stuff cause it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Um, but it was for points. Ch there's a championship apparently. Um, I think Tony's leading it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works. But um, it was really cool and it was really fun and I had fun watching. Uh, I didn't like Danica Patrick at the start. I thought she got better as the night went on. I think that yeah. was the big thing. I agree. I agree um, with that. You know, I, I never like it when commentators are openly being like, oh, let's get crashes. Let's get restarts. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is a little bit of an odd as a as a um, as an vibe. engineer. When I hear, hey, let's crash our race cars that we spent <coughs> nine months building. I, I do kinda, get that. I, I kinda, definitely get that. But I honestly, she actually did a better job than I was anticipating. She yep. actually didn't do too bad. I wasn't upset with it. Yeah. Like um, I said, I, I didn't like it at the start. I, can't, I came around to it towards the end. Still don't think he is necessarily the best fit for it. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't think... Isn't, God. isn't Hinchcliffe supposed to be doing some later in the season as well? I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. I thought Hinchcliffe was supposed to be coming on. That would be her role. That would be awesome. That would be really cool. That he, would be really freaking cool. He's cool. Um, Alan Bestwick. It was awesome to hear him calling a race again because he just he just yeah. knows how to kind of let let the product breathe. Um, so he had that, and that was the other disconnect with Danica. I felt like she was trying to do his job throughout the race at points. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, okay, I have found it out. I figured it out. Um, the The driver analysts are going to rotate um, week by week between Danica Patrick, Dario Franchitti, and James Hinchcliffe. Hinchcliffe, okay. sorry. So it won't be Hin Hin Hinch this weekend because he's going to be at Road America. Mm -hmm. It'll be Dario rotating. Um, so that will be even more interesting. <laughs> That is interesting. I think Dar Dario Franchitti is actually a really smart guy. He's really articulate. Mm -hmm. He'll he'll do a really good job if we uh, if we get to hear him this weekend. I don't know if he, especially for the dirt race. Yeah. Actually, that's kind of <laughs> him, 
Well, here's the thing: you have three. <laughs> cool, not gonna lie. You have three IndyCar guys as your color yeah. people. <laughs> really, or three IndyCar people, I guess, because I say yeah. guys, but I always, I always call everyone guy. <laughs> um, Dirt Frank Didi at a dirt track doesn't make any sense. But I, I if I told it. you I that ten years like ago, it. you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe me. I think that, but I think that's car. Honestly, man, that's the charm. It's cool. Yeah. That's the charm, and and Duck Kobe spoke about this a little bit on um, Door Bumper Clear as well. Um, he was sharing that all the drivers had like um, there's like RVs for like groups of drivers where you could kind of get away from the people, get a drink, you know, X X Y Z, whatever you need to do during a race, um, during a race weekend. And he was sharing one with like Paul Tracy, Tony Kanan, yeah, and like Greg Biffle, <laughs> like just like the weirdest guy, Duck Kobe, just like the weirdest group of people. All, like they're all asking him about like short track racing, which I think is freaking awesome. Um, I, uh, you know, we can we're gonna we're about we're gonna probably about to sit here and we're gonna talk about the product and we're gonna talk about how it presents itself. And we're gonna talk about, you know, how you know it's a fun race. Why does it need this? But if it's a fun race, why do this? But we should take it seriously. We're gonna talk about all that. At the end of the day, this is such a cool and fun thing for short track racing and for short track racers. Um, the thing that they're doing where they're going to have a local hometown hero in the car, in the, in that camo car or whatever it is, is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in racing. Um, giving a local guy a shot to kind of defend his home turf. I, I love it. I love every second of it. I adore it. I adore the, the camaraderie. I adore what it's doing. I adore what it means to these drivers. Uh, even the, even the drivers who probably have no business caring about short track racing or, or what that hometown hero or the local driver is doing. Uh, the fact that they're coming down and they're not just asking questions about how to get around the racetrack. They're, you know, they were asking duck Kobe if he was racing on Friday night in his SK, you know, like, it, I think that's so cool. I think that's awesome. I think that's really important. I think that's one of the overlooked things that SRX is doing for racing in the country is it's, it's broadening everyone's scope. It's opening it up to more people that may not, dive into road course racing i mean i dive into indycar may not dive into short track racing or dirt racing i think that's important overlooked and it's going to be one of the coolest parts of srx throughout this first season in my opinion but now let's get to the serious stuff well no i want to i want to real quick um i think my biggest problem was that i i missed the like the mission statement you know what i mean i kind of whiffed on interpreting it maybe Mm-hmm. As a lot of other folks did, um, I don't want people to think I didn't say it because I really cool mm-hmm. to watch. But also, like I'm preparing for a broadcast, so like I'm already, I'm stressed out watching it, which is my was probably <laughs> another part yeah. of my issue, right? Um, USORL Saturdays, two weeks left, live on JTN, ten forty p.m. Eastern time. Um, but <laughs> Davey's going for a championship, likely. But I just I don't know. It it still it still felt like like I know Ray Everham came out right away and he's like I'm gonna build a car that clean air you know there's no dirty air won't mean anything. And I still kind of felt like it did, but I don't know if that was maybe because of the guys that were in the cars and you know, how they were driving the cars and the fact that they didn't have a lot of experience in them, which is I think something we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it goes back to a lot of well, we thought this was cool before it started, so we're going to think it's cool now, too. Mm-hmm. Which I think is fair. I mean, it it was cool, so I I don't think you should not think that. It was great. I had fun. Mm. But, again, it's it's about... I saw so many people saying, oh, I wish this could be like this, and I wish, you know, this route was taken with this motorsport and this route was taken you know what i mean like i saw a lot of that this is so much different because this is more akin to professional wrestling where it's a lot of entertainment stuff not that it's scripted or whatever right but it's it's big about flashy stuff entertainment 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 for the motorsport fan like this is your first like purpose built because IROC tried to do this and I don't I think IROC completely whiffed on it. Because mm-hmm. this is what IROC should have done, right? Um 
it it's the first motorsport sanctioning body that's openly said, okay, we're here for entertainment. So it's kind of awkward mm-hmm. for me, at least. I'm not like, what are we allowing? You know? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Yes, no. I kind of feel like it's like that. Like, what what is acceptable for a motorsport that's trying to be exciting? That's right. the sole purpose is to be exciting. Like, eh, like, well, like where, like, where is the line? Where do we stop? Where do we go? What works? What doesn't? What seems silly? What will, over time, not probably seem silly? That kind of thing. I, I think there's a lot of um, boundaries to be found, boundaries to be set, maybe even um, boundaries that I don't think NASCAR has really tested with their exhibition races. So. I think it's so early on in SRX's life it's as well. It's not fair to judge it right now <clears throat> on yeah. a lot of that and, and stuff. It's, I, I, I wouldn't say it's not fair to judge it, but it is it is like you do have to keep an open mind that we're judging an entity that was just exposed to the public for the very first time in excess. This wasn't a social media clip of a car going around one and two at Thompson. Like this is that was the real deal. That was it for the first time ever. We actually got to see something, and for the most part, I liked it, and it was good. And I don't have too many complaints. Yeah, I have questions, but I don't have too many complaints. I think that's that's a good way to put it. Questions, <clears throat> not complaints. Mm. Why do we need a heat one? Why why can't we like have the other thing? I would really like to see. Is like the uh, just have the car that's driven by like do it by like car owner points almost. You know what that's I mean? That's a cool idea. In- that would be a pretty good idea. Instead of like the drivers, because I feel like like the short trackers, like say say the short track guy wins all six races, the local guy wins mm-hmm. all six races, but then the champion's <laughs> going to be the guy that ran all six. That's you know a I mean? really 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 good solution to the championship thing that like the championship already isn't probably because you, like, you took the top of srx's right. importance but we have it and it's like well there's only like 10 full-time drivers and well you know, why do we need it i think is the question if, if I, th- I feel I, like we're trying to place importance on these races yeah and i and i think what you just said having owner points is actually brilliant mm-hmm. Gen- genuinely i think that is actually a brilliant idea um for like the short track guys getting all their points and the part-time guys and xyz car like that's a freaking good idea yeah i don't know why they wasn't thought of yeah it, i mean it I probably it was it, it just it probably didn't feel like because the t- listen the top the top two finishers this week and if this is your first time watching motorsport they're not racing this weekend mm-hmm and I know Doug Kobe, like, that was understood beforehand, but I didn't realize that Greg Biffle was only running this in Slinger, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, oh, Greg Biffle's going to show up, and he's going to run, you know, all of these. Nope. Right. But it's just, I don't, I, I wish he did something like that, like, a, almost like owner's points, because I feel like you're going to discount a champion then, because we, we do that within our, with our NR leagues and our sim racing leagues, and, you know, there's, yeah. there's the crossover there. Oh, well, so-and-so only showed up for five races, and if they would have showed up through, for the whole season, well, you wouldn't have won the championship. Yeah, actually, that I mean, I, honestly, that's a good enough idea to where I think if it got traction on, on social media, it would be something that would be looked at, because SRX seems like that kind of series that's, like, would be open to changing and something. Maybe mission. not like changing Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, and I hadn't really considered that. But yeah. I'll uh, I'll be pushing that on social media for a few weeks now. At Davy Hazard on Twitter. You know what else we got to push? What? Some merch. Some some merch. Some some diecast. Diecasts maybe. Could it be? Could it be the Circle B? It could, folks. You know them, you love them, our friends at Circle B Diecast. They are your home for all your diecast needs, as well as t-shirts, hats, and more. CircleBDiecast.com has you covered. You can now use our code, JTN, at checkout for free shipping on your order of $20 or more. This is obviously our segment where Davey and I both pick an item that we think you should get. Davey. Coughing, and now he's going to tell us his item. Don't tell me like that. Um, I am going to have you take a, take a nice gander 
Alex Bowman's uh, Nashville car, the Ally fan vote car designed by Dale Jr., which I just learned. Um, it's his. I, don't, I, I still don't know. If that, is that true? It really was designed by Dale Jr. Mm-hmm. It was a contest, too. Like, he got voted on on Twitter and everything. Yeah, yeah, I know that much, but Dale Jr., man. Anyway, it's his purple, blue, teal, pink. I mean, it's a beautiful race car. I think it looks awesome. I probably am actually going to buy this diecast at some point. I freaking love it. I'm um, going to look really good in Nashville. For the LA 400. Use, use code JTN. Um, get yourself a pretty race car. In nice. the mail. It's going to be a pre-order. Yeah. So you won't get charged until they ship it. But when they ship it, you'll get charged. But not for shipping. Because you'll use that code JTN. So use code JTN. Bada bing, bada boom. <clears throat> bada bing. Um, Kyle Larson had some new Valvoline shirts drop, so I, I kind of can't pick one because I think they look they both look really cool, but you can now get them. I believe they're both like 25, somewhere in that range, so you'll get your free shipping too. Um, again, using that code JTN. But some cool looking Valvoline shirts for Kyle Larson. He's driving the Valvoline car this weekend. Um, so a little, little spice up from that Hendrick Cars uh, fate scheme that he's been running. Which is always good, but um, again, we're going to have links in the description below where you can get those things, of course. CircleBeDieCast.com, your home for all your NASCAR merchandise needs. Davey, it's a big weekend of racing. It is indeed. It is indeed. Let's start, because we started with them tonight. IndyCar, Road America. They're on the road. Oh, in America. They're on the road in America. Road America. We got... Boy, oh boy. Um... Joseph Newgarden takes down first one for Penske. Dang it. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. I'm going to go the complete opposite. Uh, Alexander Rossi finally figures out how to turn his luck around. Oh, I would love it, though. I he, would uh, freaking love it. It'll probably be like Colton Herta or... Wouldn't be mad about that either. Alex Plo, Scott Dixon. That's probably... Wouldn't worry. Uh, I would be mad about Scott Dixon. You've won enough already. Agreed. Isn't it funny when it's not your guy? It's boring when he win when the same person wins all the time. Oh, dude, when it's your guy, it's the best. But you know, <laughs> um, cool that we're you know we're going back to a more traditional, natural road course for the first time since Barber too. So that's interesting. then what now six races? You had the Texas double, and then you had the true. two races at Indy, and then the Detroit double. But very true. Um. Speaking of um, excuse me. Speaking of natural racetracks, uh, the most natural racetrack of all, dirt. <laughs> Dirt's for farming. <laughs> Dirt's um, for farming. I agree. Dirt's for farming. Um, SRX going on the dirt at Knoxville. Who are we going to both pick? Tony Stewart because reasons or? I would take Scott Bloomquist. That's a pick. Yep. That's a pick. Hey, check it out. Check it out. Tony Stewart. <laughs> um, I think I I can't recall. Um, isn't Haley Deegan supposed to run a couple races for TK? Um, I thought. Who cares? I don't know, but she'd be good if it if this is one of them. So I I'm not sure. Yeah, she'd wreck enough people. All right. Um, NASCAR, all three national touring series take to the Nashville Super Speedway. Obviously, when this race was announced last year, it was very controversial because everyone was like, okay, no fairgrounds. Um, Ow. I'd like to remind people that this track is different. It's unique from almost every other racetrack we're going to go to this year. So that, in my book, is a plus. Um, plus. trucks on Friday, Xfinity on Saturday, and then Cup on Sunday. Oh, I put two. Did you notice no. I put the guys in the truck field Friday and the Xfinity people and No, dude. Lingerman isn't in it. He is. Ah. But I was going to pick Priest for the truck race. Oh no. Parker Klingerman for the truck race. All right, and I'll pick Ryan Priest. Yeah. There you go. Dude. Have your cake, you yeah. need it too. Yeah. Um Xfinity. He- DGR, let's go. Natalie Decker, just kidding, not doing that. Um, <laughs> no, Josh Berry. Yeah. Josh Berry, I'm going to go Josh Berry. His last race, I believe, in the eight car, too, so. Josh freaking Berry. Um, yeah, Josh Berry. What a send-off that would be, two wins. 
take it for the short trackers. Um, Kyle Busch, Tyler Reddick are in this race, so those are kind of two picks that would be really easy to make. Yeah, but screw that. That's not going to make them. Um, I'm going to pick Daniel Hemrick for like the um, billionth time. <laughs> maybe, maybe since no one's been here for the most part. Mm, Cup series win. is tough. Cup series is tough. Cup series is tough. So I was thinking about it today. I'm like, well, Kyle Larson hasn't been good at the 750 stuff. And then I was like, oh, wait, he probably should have won Dover. Then I was also like, oh, wait, Alex Bowman won Dover. And this is the Ally 400, Davey. Concrete! Concrete connection! Concrete Alex. No, but Bowman's been really good with the 750 stuff. Hendrick's just been good in general. Um, so you're gonna go Alex Bowman? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just... Because it's fun. Because last time yeah, I picked him, he won, so... Yeah, the Hendrick dominance has been obvious, so I think I gotta... I gotta go in the direction of Brad Keselowski. Dude, I would... I would be so happy... This is where he got obviously he got his first Xfinity, then nationwide series win. I know he's rather rather good at Nashville Super Speedway. Yep. So I was surprised so, to see that they didn't enter a second Penske for him this weekend in the Xfinity race. But uh, nonetheless, uh, they are applying probably. resin to the track too. Velvet rubber in, not PJ one. Woo! Tire dragons, yeah. Yeah. They breathe. They breathe rubber. Shut up. Let's end the show. All right, Davey. <laughs> Where can they find more from you? You can find more from me. And by the way, I wasn't being serious on the show, but it is the end of the show. It so is. You can find more of me at D7H5 on Instagram, at Davey Heiser on Twitter, and at D7H5 or with an ER at the end on Twitch. What about JTN's stuff, Joe? Where can we well, figure that out? All you got to do is search on google you can go johto network we're on tiktok twitter facebook oh we are on tiktok aren't we we are we kind of go we kind of going crazy um crazy not really but uh oh. you can follow us all on there especially for y'all youngins that like the tiktoks you should probably turn that off um my sound was off i don't understand how that <laughs> even happens i literally checked it before i went i don't know what happened chinese government's hacking your phone um it's true <laughs> but uh, but of course always the best way to help support us on JTN is if uh, you're on one of your podcast platforms make sure you follow the podcast that way head on over to our YouTube like like the Fake Racers podcast this, this, this specific episode as well as making sure you're subscribed on YouTube that is the best way as always to support us here on JTN um you can also check out the JTN merch store. We got Davey Hazard merch up there. We obviously have our Fake Racers podcast merch, which if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing it on your screen right now. Um, Matthew Steelman merch, USORL Cup Series driver, Mikey Murata merch, USORL Cup Series driver, and a bunch of other great stuff. Sean Whitehill technically merch with our JTN race car merch. Um, so go check all that stuff out. That's another, if you, again, I, I don't like pushing the merch, but if you have the means and you really like what we do, um, and you want to support us, you want to rep the brand, uh, we would appreciate that so, so much. And it's freaking cool. It is. By the way, it is cool. I, I like to think I do a good job with our merch designs. He does. Thank you, Davey. He definitely does. I need validation from people verbally. <laughs> I will give it. <laughs> Words of affirmation, baby. But um, that concludes this week's episode. It felt like it was going to go on forever there when I was talking about the All-Star race, didn't it? It did, but guess what? It was good content. I hope I so. Both made, I think we both made good, strong points on the All-Star race that kind of mirrored each other in a way, but wasn't, but yeah. was, but wasn't, but was. You know, it was kind of like how communism and fascism, they're like the complete opposites of the political right. spectrum, but they're actually really in. close to each other. You appreciate know? it very much. I really right. enjoyed it. You guys listening, we're going <laughs> to ignore what Joe just said. We're going to move past that and never talk about it on the show again. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we love you. Good night, day, evening, afternoon, morning, noon, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Bye. Hi, guys. Thanks for putting up with me.